All right, so let's take a look at this one here. This is Rhino Hunt. So there's a scenario here. I got this from, uh, I think, Sands, one of the training companies. So they're claiming, they're saying, whoops, oh, I, excuse me, I hit a button which is uh, evil. Um, okay, good. Control plus might do it. Ah, shift control plus. Okay, good. All right, so the city of New Orleans passed a law making it illegal to possess nine rhinoceros images. This is, of course, nonsense, but they're making up a story. All right, so we have a USB key seized from university labs, and there was no hard drive. That's why we have a story whereby you can uh, have a small evidence file. That's why I said you can do what we're doing here without a big, powerful machine, because I've chosen small cases. So here's the evidence file. It's a zip file. One common mistake Windows users make is they double-click this, and, and now they think they've unzipped the file. This is Windows lying to you. Windows does this a lot. You have not opened the file. You're looking inside the zip file. So you're not going to be able to load this data in another program. What you have to do is unzip it another way. But in this case, I think you don't have to unzip it before using it. So what you do want to do is verify the hash value. And this is something to get used to. Um, I don't think we have hash calc on this machine. Let me check. This is a brand new install. Calc. One thing about Windows, which is annoying, is it doesn't have a hashing program built in, although there's probably one in PowerShell, but I don't know how to use it. So uh, we're going to use hash calc. If this thing will open, which it does not seem to be doing, what's the deal here? That's not frozen. I point to that. Ah, oh, there we are. There we are. All right. So I go here and I'm looking for hash calc, which is right here. Download. And uh, there it is. Hashcalc.zip has come down. All right. And in this case, I can double click it because there's only one file in there, the setup file, and I can run it from here because it'll put it in memory and run it. So this is just a program that lets you calculate the hash of files. Uh, Windows does not support this by default because this is a sort of old fashioned sloppy way to verify the integrity of something. And what Microsoft likes to do is have software that's signed with a code signing certificate, which is certainly a more professional technique, but it's not available for things like forensic images. So now I can take the hash of something. And in particular, I want to take the hash of the zip file I just downloaded. So I go to uh, open File Explorer and the Downloads folder. And there's the thing, case1.zip. So I'm going to drag that into hash calc. case1.zip. OK. And uh, hmm, looks like it did not load case1.zip. Come on, still it's not taking it. I'm trying to drag this. It's not dragging. OK, what's the story here? There we go. Drag it into there. All right. I may have to just open it the other way, drag and drop does not seem to work on Windows 11, all right? I don't know what's the problem with Windows 11, but there's always problems. We'll do it this way. Downloads, case1.zip. There it is, I finally got it. Now I can calculate the hash. And there are the hash values. All right, and I'm gonna see if it's right, so I compare it to the value here. And the value here is, um, say the SHA-1 should end in C1D. And the SHA-1 does end in C1D. So that's good. And you're going to get used to this. When you download something, you verify the hash to make sure it's right. Uh, that's how you know you got a good download, you got the right file, and so on. OK, so now that's done. Now I am going to unzip it. OK, to unzip a file in Windows, you have to go to it in File Explorer, and then right-click Extract All. Extract. Double clicking will not do it, which confuses a lot of people. So now I've got these unzipped files, which is Rhino, Rhino 2, and Rhino 3, and Rhino USB. The first three are log files, and in fact, I think they are packet capture files with the unusual log extension. And the last one is a DAT file, that's a disk image. It's relatively big, 250K, so it's from an old, older, smaller USB hard drive. So now we create an autopsy case named F201 and we bring in the rhino usb.dd. So let me get autopsy going. Close all these things. There's autopsy. OK, 
Okay. Now we make a new case. F201. All right. Next. F201. Uh, finish. Creates a database just to uh, store the information. And now it's warning me something is not working about this particular hobby of autopsy, but I don't think it'll matter. I mentioned last time autopsy is not officially supported on Windows 11. So I'm breaking the rules a little bit here, but it seems to be working all right. taking too long, let's take a look at the instructions. Yeah, I import the DD, configure ingest, and just take the default, good. So, here it is, I think it finished that nonsense and it should be offering to me to ingest data. There we go. Now I can generate new host on the default is fine. Now I bring in a disk image, which is the default. And next, now I gotta go find my rhino.dd, which is in here. There it is, dd, rhinousb.dd. So I double click that, and now next. And I'll just do the default ingest where it looks for all these different things in there because it's such a small file, it won't take too long. Later on when we're doing big files, we're gonna turn off a lot of these to save time. Each one of those is a different module that will try to analyze this file to find that kind of evidence. So this can take a really long time on a big case, like a real Windows image of a whole Windows operating system, you'll wish you had a lot of RAM and a fast processor and a lot of time. But we're doing small cases here just to make it less boring. All right, so now it is imported this thing, Rhino, Rhino DB, and so now I have some files here and so on, so we can look in there. Let's go back to the instructions. When it's, you're gonna expand the containers to see images and deleted files down there, so let's take a look at that. Um, file types, by extension, images, and you see this X shows deleted files, there's deleted files, file system and all, all right? And I should have seen 132 in all, that's troubling me that I only see zero, ah, it's because it's not done. Notice down here at the bottom, analyzing files, 64%. So I was able to expand these containers, but it's not done yet. Which is why, because I should have had some deleted files. And if I don't, that's no good. And maybe you wonder if maybe this autopsy is not working, but in fact it's working. Like I said, it'll take some time to analyze them, not too long. Let's go back and look at the instructions. All right, so when you look at the images, you should see various images of alligators and rhinos and stuff, snakes and such. And so there's a particular image to find. And then we're gonna look in the deleted files and we're gonna find more images in there, sort by file type, and we wanna find a Word document in the deleted files. And uh, the Word document is going to be a diary which you read through and find some flags. So there's a Word document with evidence, and there's a bunch of images, you have to find a particular image, so. Uh, good, it's up to 100%, and now there's 132 deleted files, okay. So, to look at the images, this is pretty easy, just like you did on the previous one. Uh, you just click an image up here, and you'll see it down there. Um, there it is, and you can adjust these things, and if you have a higher resolution machine, it can be less than, there we are. So this one looks like a snake or a crocodile or something. There's another one. So you look through those images until you find a flag, which is a particular image. And then these deleted files, there's 132 of them. So it would be pretty annoying to read through them all, but you can in fact sort them various ways to find the good ones. And in particular here, um, there's a variety of things here. There's a whole bunch of creation times, 
And then there's a size flags location, MD5 hash, and then there's a sort of extensions. There's extensions and there's MIME types. MIME is a, a categorization of files, multi-purpose internet mail extensions intended for email. But if you sort by MIME type, it's sorting one way with the blanks in the top. If you click it again, it should put the other ones on top, but that doesn't seem to be working very well. Scroll down and see, it looks like my MIME type is blank. Let me check my instructions again. Um, I thought I would find Word here, but you can also go by the extension doc. Now, I don't know why my MIME type is empty. That's rude. Oh, it's just taking time to fill up, isn't it? Okay, I'm just, it being slow. It was still working down there again. All right, so now I've got image.ping. Well, I can do it by extension too. If I sort, there, there's the doc file. So it's not too hard to find the word document. It's the only DOC extension, that worked. Although the MIME type worked when I did it on Windows 10, doesn't seem to work on Windows 11. There's always something. And so when you click on that, down here you'll find the thing you have to read through to find clues. Um, and this is something, I have a lot of students that don't want to read through anything, they want to just find a flag and turn it in. But you really have to read through stuff, and this is mostly what forensic is, is looking through a long list of things for the goodies. Um, emails, images, documents. You really have to be patient enough to read through a lot of stuff to find the important things. And, uh, all right. And I think that's it. Now, just a few flags to find. You'll find a description of what happened to the hard drive. Notice there was no hard drive here, just a USB stick and some other files. And you can find out in that story what happened here. All right. So, um, and by the way, there are two files containing an email address. And that's a little bit harder to find. Um, you will find down here in the data artifacts analysis, there's things that looks for other things. And there's something down here that looks for files containing email addresses which is another thing, email addresses might be in the file contents or in the metadata. And that's of course very important because that might be a person connected with the case or it might just be some software developer that wrote a program, but it's uh, a common thing you would wanna find, email addresses uh, to, for further research. So that's all you need to do for that one. Let me stop that recording.